Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about my very favourite cosy mystery writers. I adore cosy mysteries, especially the golden age style of cosy mystery that were traditionally written in the interwar years and also during World War II and just after World War II. Those are my very favourite types of mystery. I'm not very good at dealing with too much blood and gore, so I definitely do like my mysteries to be cosy. So let's start off with the Queen of Crime, Agatha Christie. This was the very first Agatha Christie book I ever read, Halloween Party. I read it when I was about 10 years old. I think my mum gave it to me when I was 10 because there's a character in this book called Miranda and she's a young girl in the story. This is a Poirot mystery. It also features Ariadne Oliver, who's a regular character in some of the Poirot mysteries. I really like Ariadne Oliver. She was um, definitely based on Agatha Christie herself. She's a character who writes mysteries and she's very scatty. And she uh, she's really dislikes the a uh, detective that she creates who's a detective who is Finnish I think and I find that funny because Agatha Christie grew to become quite irritated by Hercule Poirot very much like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle uh, got irritated with Sherlock Holmes and he finished Sherlock Holmes off only to bring him back but of course Agatha Christie uh, deals with Poirot in her own way as well so I really like this one because there's Ariane Oliver and there's Hercule Poirot in this. If there could be Captain Hastings too, then I would be very happy. But I think I prefer Ariane Oliver, uh, Ariane Oliver to Hastings. So this is definitely one of my favourites. But Agatha Christie, I just adore her. I think that she was a genius. Her mysteries are so clever. I'll never forget the first time I read Death on the Nile. That ending just came as such a shock to me. I guess mysteries fairly easily, so I almost always sort of know who did it, but with Agatha Christie that doesn't actually ring true. Some of hers I really haven't known, especially when I was quite new to reading them and you don't then necessarily know the way her mind works and the most likely people who end up being the murderer. So partly why I loved these books was because of the really clever twists to plot, but they're actually books that I listen to over and over and over again on Audible and some of them my favourite listens. I think I have, I think I have read every single one of Agatha Christie's books, so I am a mega fan. And there are some that I then reread by listening to them quite a few times. Miss Marple is my very favourite creation of Agatha Christie. I have one of my favourite Miss Marple books here. This is 450 from Paddington. I would definitely recommend this one if you haven't read any Miss Marple. Murder at the Vicarage is the first in the Miss Marple series. That's also really good. And at Bertram's Hotel is a classic. I love that one. And A Murder is Announced is incredibly clever. Really, really, really enjoy that Miss Marple. I still get a kick out of that one, even though I know what's coming when I reread it. I just still really enjoy the plot twist in that one. But yes, Miss Marple is my favourite creation. I love Poirot too, but it will always be Miss Marple for me as my favourite detective. She's an elderly woman who is very soft-spoken and sweet, but that belies this inner steel within her and she is, sh she is so clever. She lives in a little uh, village called St Mary Mead and she knows everyone in the village and she always draws comparisons uh, with people that she meets to people that she's 
met and known in the village and she says that all people are very much the same. <laughs> I, I just love Miss Marple and some of Agatha Christie's best mysteries I think are actually Miss Marple ones. The short stories um, that feature Miss Marple are oh so brilliant, I absolutely love those because that's one reason I like Agatha Christie too, she doesn't just write very good crime novels, she wrote a lot of short stories and many of them are really brilliant as well. So yes, to me she is the queen of crime for a very good reason. In general I prefer her earlier work to her later work but there are just so many classics to her name, I think she was truly extraordinary. Next up my second favourite golden age mystery writer is Dorothy L Sayers. She wrote the Lord Peter Whimsey mysteries, this is the first in the Lord, Pe in the Lord Peter Whimsey series, it's called Whose Body and Dorothy L Sayers is definitely more of a literary writer than Agatha Christie, what I mean by that is there's generally more depth to her characters, you can tell she also really thinks about um, the language style, um, there are a lot of allusions to other works of literature in her books, so they're very very well written, also very clever. They don't have quite the flair of plot to me that Agatha Christie does, but that isn't always the point of these books. There are a few books in the Lord Peter Whimsey series, like Unnatural Death for instance, and Strong Poison even, when as the reader you pretty much know who the murderer is, so does Lord Peter Whimsey, but the mystery part comes into how the murderer actually committed the crime and Dorothy L Sayers comes up with really ingenious um, means of murder in her books and I really enjoy that cleverness to them. But in all honesty I read these books for the characters more than I read them for the mystery. So what I love best about the Lord Peter Whimsey books are, well Lord Peter Whimsey himself, he's a really great character, he's a kind of mix between Bertie Wooster and Sherlock Holmes, he's the very typical member of the male aristocracy but there's actually much more to him than that. Um, he fought in World War One and suffered from shell shock after that, which really adds some depth to his character. And his character really grows as Dorothy L Sayers grows as a writer and as the series evolves as well. I really enjoy Lord Peter Whimsey's relationship with his man Bunter, who was with him in the war and then became his manservant after the war. There's definitely a bit of a Bertie Wooster and Jeeves feeling to that pairing, but Lord Peter Whimsey is far from stupid, he's incredibly intelligent and he dabbles in crime and ends up solving a lot of murders. But later on in the series, in Strong Poison, Lord Peter Whimsey falls in love with a woman called Harriet Vane, who was accused of murdering her lover. She's facing the very grave danger of being found guilty and then being hanged for that crime, so Lord Peter Whimsey sets out to save her. Their relationship is really interesting, it's actually one of my favourite relationships in literature. I love it because Lord Peter Whimsey falls for Harriet instantly, but she doesn't fall for him, it actually takes her quite a long time to realise that she actually well I don't want to actually give away too many spoilers to this, so all I'm going to say about it is that their relationship develops over a few books, you're not quite sure what direction it's going to take because what is vitally important to Harriet is that her relationship with Lord Peter can be a relationship of equals and that's something they both have to navigate but I absolutely love how it's done, it was a very personal 
relationship to Dorothy L. Sayers. I think she actually wrote the man that she would have liked to have had in her life, Lord Peter Whimsey, and especially how he becomes, the man that he becomes in his uh, quest to get Harriet to agree to marry him. That is the man that Dorothy L. Sayers wanted in her own life, and she sadly didn't get that. But I like to think that she got joy out of creating that pairing in fiction, and it was one of the best literary um, pairings, in my opinion. I, I absolutely love it. So there's so much to enjoy about these books. They're great mysteries. I love the the time period detail. Obviously, both Agatha Christie and Dorothy L. Sayers were contemporary writers of one of my favourite periods, the sort of interwar years and World War II, so I just love all the period detail from their books, but yes, absolutely adore Dorothy L. Sayers. My very favourites are Unnatural Death, that's one without Harriet Vane that is my favourite, Strong Poison I really like, Gordy Knight is an absolute classic, not actually a murder in that one. There's a lot of Harriet Vane in that one. Um, and it's it's the one to me that comes closest to real literature rather than sort of genre writing. Although I have issues with um, people making disparaging comments about detective fiction and genre writing anyway. But that's a separate issue. So yes, I would really recommend those. Or, you know, start at the beginning. That's always a good idea too with Who's Body. And then the third queen of crime, Naya Marsh, who was actually a New Zealand writer, but she wrote a lot of novels set in the UK. Um, she was also a contemporary of Dorothy L. Sayers, for instance, although I think they didn't really get along, but I'm not sure where I have got that idea from. I would have to check that, but I have a feeling they didn't think much of each other. Anyway, um, I do enjoy Naya Marsh, though she is my least favourite of these are typically called the queens of crime, Agatha Christie, Dorothy L. Sayers, Niall Marsh, sometimes Marjorie Allingham is also put into that category, but I'd say these are really the top three, though she to me is the trickiest to read from a contemporary point of view. You really have to remember that, that Niall Marsh's books, are, they have to be read in terms of realising that um, they were set many years ago and that many opinions on things like homosexuality and class and race have thankfully changed so much since then. So I do find them harder to read because of that. However, one aspect I really enjoy to her mysteries, and they are also very much about the Ag uh, the mystery. She's like Agatha Christie in that way. Um, but they also remind me a bit of Dorothy L. Sayers because there's another great partnership in this series between uh, Roderick Allen, who's the sort of gentleman detective in the books, and Agatha Troy, who is a female artist that he meets and falls in love with. and. Artists in Crime is one of the ones I've highlighted um, because Agatha Troy features strongly in this book and I really like her character. I really enjoy their pairing as well and yeah, this one is definitely worth a read. I would recommend it. Okay, so those are the sort of queens of crime. Moving on to ones that maybe aren't so well known, I have to highly recommend Josephine Tay, especially this book, Miss Pym Disposes, which I absolutely adore. I think it's really funny. It's about a sort of middle-aged woman who writes a book about psychology, and rather to her surprise, it becomes a bestseller. And she gets invited to speak at institutions all over Britain. And an old school friend of hers calls her in and asks her as a favour to speak to her girls' school. It's a it's more of a college actually, and it's particularly devoted to physical education. I have a feeling this is probably set in the sort of 50s or something like that. It has it has that feeling that it would be that sort of era. Um, 
And so Miss Pym goes to this girl's school and addresses them and she started and she she really enjoys sort of being back to school but she also started starts to notice some slightly disturbing vibes shall we say within the school there's some strange happenings and tensions running high and then of course um someone ends up dead and yes I just it reminds you a little bit of Cat Among the Pigeons, which is another favourite Agatha Christie of mine, um, because of the sort of school setting and so on. But this is really good. I definitely recommend Josephine Tay. She wrote quite a few other mysteries as well. Um, Nicola Upton has written a new series in which she's cast Josephine Tay as the um like solver of mysteries in this sort of um, new mystery series that she has written. I haven't read any of these books by Nicola Upton, but because I like Josephine Tay so much, I'm quite curious to read these um, to see what they're they're like. I think it's a really interesting idea to cast um, a writer of mysteries as a sort of detective figure in a new series. I think that is an interesting idea and I think she's taken real elements from Josephine Tay Tay's life but has obviously fictionalised a lot as well but yeah I'm interested in reading those if any of you have read Nicola Upton's books then let me know because I'd like to read them oh this was another Josephine Tay the daughter of time which is one of her most um famous ones as well and it features Alan Grant who it's an inspector that sort of uh, comes up quite a bit in uh, a few of her in a few of her mysteries. So I thought I'd just mention that one too. Okay, next for fans of Miss Marple, you must try Patricia Wentworth. Um, she wrote the Miss Silver mysteries. Miss Silver is very much in the style of Miss Marple. She's a bit of an elderly sort of you know doddery doddery old lady only she isn't <laughs> sharp as anything uh she's a sort of ex-governess who sets up her own little um private detective agency and they're really sweet charming fun reads if you love the sort of typical country house murder mystery style book then definitely try Patricia Wentworth Again, in a similar vein, I love Georgette Hare's books. Um, this one is a first edition, so <laughs> I wanted to show that because I'm so fond of I'm fond of the original vintage ones. But they've also redone a lot of her mysteries um, as really attractive paperbacks. Georgette Hare wrote a lot of Regency romances, very much in the style of sort of Jane Austen, although they're much lighter um than that they're, they're quite light reads but they're very funny I mean she was an amazing writer and her research was meticulous as well but she also wrote a few mysteries and I really enjoy her mysteries they're they're again they again are very much the classic English country house type mystery. I mean, this one is called Why Shoot a Butler? You know, they definitely have quite a few of the standard tropes of golden age mystery writing, but I still really enjoy them. Um, this one is a particular favourite of mine. It's called, it's been republished as A Christmas Party. Its original title is Envious Casca. And this is still a favourite of mine to read every Christmas. It's a real cosy Christmas mystery. But uh, frankly, I think it's a lot better than a lot of the sort of uh, British Library crime mysteries that are coming out. Some of those are really good, but some are quite terrible. <laughs> and I think this is a, a really good classic Christmas mystery to read. So maybe for this coming Christmas, you can remember this one. Obviously, I've put links to all of these books in the show note in the description box down below. I also briefly wanted to mention P.D. James. Now, she doesn't really fall into the cosy mystery territory. To me, her murders are too sort of um, gory 
and too psychologically disturbing and also a bit too modern to really fall into the cosy mystery but she was definitely influenced by people like Dorothy L. Sayers and Agatha Christie you can really see that and again I think she's a bit more of a literary mystery writer um, very much in the Dorothy L. Sayers vein in that way which I find really interesting so if you want something a little bit grimmer then then these classic cozy mysteries try P.T. James she's a brilliant brilliant writer and then just a few runners up of ones that um, I'm sort of interested in but I haven't read myself yet but I thought I would highlight so this one is A Quiet Life in the Country by T.E. Kinsey a lady hardcastle mystery my mum actually first alerted me to this series which um it's a modern series but it's set I think just before World War One yeah this one is set in 1908 this is the first in the series and it's about um an English woman who is a, is a member of the sort of British aristocracy but she's got this interesting past where I think she was a spy and she um, moves to a quiet English village in the countryside to sort of um, try and forget her sort of troubled past but a murder instantly happens and she has to solve it and she has a very um, close relationship with her maid who helps her to solve all of these crimes and I've started reading this one and was really enjoying it and then had to put it down because I actually had to read um, something for my podcast but I think I really will enjoy these and I trust my mum's taste so I thought I would mention these to you too they might be fun and then there's The Mitford Murders by Jessica Fellows which I'm really curious to try as well this series I think there are three or four in the titles in the series now um but what Jessica Fellows has done is she's taken the real life uh, Mitford sisters um, Nancy Mitford was the famous writer who wrote The Pursuit of Love and Love in a Cold Climate um, and uh, quite a few other books I love her writing and Nancy Mitford is featured in these books and then it's her sort of maidservant um, they pair up together and solve sort of crimes together I said I haven't read this I started this one too and was enjoying it but again I had to put it down for something else um so I really want to get back to this and yes this seems a bit of a theme that's emerging a little bit in this type of detective fiction now I already mentioned the Nicola Upton where she's taken you know a real person from history jo Josephine Tay and is using her in detective fiction and this is what Jessica Fellows has done with Nancy Mitford so I think that's quite interesting and yeah I'm really looking forward to trying this one and hopefully liking it anyway those are my very favorite cozy mystery writers with a few little honorary mentions or or mentions of authors that I want to try. There are lots I haven't mentioned, like the Maisie Dobbs books, the Phryne Fisher books, um, but maybe another time. I just want to talk about my top tier <laughs> set of writers for you all today. I'd love to know, do you like Cozy Mysteries as much as I do? Who are your favourite writers within this genre? Are you tempted to try any of these? Do you have a favourite between Agatha Christie and Dorothy L. Sayers? Because that's something I always struggle with. I'm not sure if I could ever decide that. So I'd like to know your opinion. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and remember to subscribe to my channel which you can do by clicking my face it pops up here. But yes, thank you for watching and I'll be back again very soon with another video. Bye!